Most creative people like to think in pictures. We have visions and clear ideas. It's easy for you to imagine the overall look and feel of a design or have a clear vision of how an interface should look. But trust me, even the best designers out there will still make mistakes if they don't break down their visions into a diagram, a user journey, or even a set of notes. User flows and task flows are both great tools for sharing design ideas quickly and help you get feedback early on before you actually put in the design work. Even when designers understand these flows enough to tell them apart, there are common mistakes that are made. I have a video linked right here that talks about the differences between the two. But in this video, I'll go over four common mistakes that you can avoid when mapping user and task flows. Before we start, I wanna clarify that it's completely fine to make mistakes. You're supposed to make them so that you can actually learn and grow from them. But my intention now is to help you avoid making the common ones. If you have experienced any other misconceptions with user and task flows, please leave a comment below and let me know. That way we can all learn and grow from each other's experiences. Now that we got that out the way, let's look at mistake number one. Task flows are generally just mapped out as square boxes linked with one another in a sequence. It's as simple as that. User flows, however, make use of a set of different symbols. The reason why it's important to know these and use them correctly is because of the fact that user flows are used by more than just designers. Engineers and product managers map out user flows as well. So by using the correct universal set of symbols, you'll speak the same language as everyone else. Moving on to the next one. Always put yourself in the shoes of the user. Start thinking about the problems they would face and how they could overcome them. Different users solve problems in different ways. That's important to consider when mapping out a user flow. Some questions you may wanna answer are, what's the user trying to accomplish with this product? Why do they need to accomplish them? What's their motivation? How can this product help them accomplish this goal? What can possibly hold them back? In contrast from task flows, user flows have start and end points. This means that a user could enter a website or app from different places. This creates a set of different expectations for the users. It's therefore essential to distinguish users that reach a website through direct traffic versus someone who finds it through a Google search. I'll give you guys an example. I'm sure you're subscribed to a bunch of newsletters and get offers all the time. Those offers lead to certain pages of a website, which in turn has an offer or a coupon attached to it. By reaching that website through that entry point, you have completely different expectations than a user reaching the site from elsewhere. And last but not least, don't spend too much time on the visuals. Make things stupid simple. I try to outline everything in pure text first, a good set of notes and bullet points. Once I'm done with that, I move into visualizing it in a user flow diagram. Outlining things helps you focus on the content first, which is the key focus of both a user and a task flow. That pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed this and found it valuable. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and hit that like button below for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments at all, feel free to just drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Catch you guys in a few. Peace.